Hello viewers, welcome back to another episode of How to Beat Beth Harmon. I'm taking on the next bot in the series. This one is supposed to be 2500. Um, that might be exaggerated. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll also find out if I can provide a challenge for her or not. So usual stuff, develop your pieces, control the center. She was saying she was on the ceiling <laughs> since she was eight. So same as last time so far. Okay, so last time she played knight takes e4, um, bishop e7 is also, it's, it's rarer, but it's not a bad move. I think I have, I might have seen this before. We're supposed to play rookie one here, defending the pawn. And now we prepare d4, I play c3 to support my pawn. So I'll play c3 and hopefully d4 if all goes well. D5. Okay, that was a surprise. So this is similar to something called the Marshall. So in the Marshall, though, Black has played A6 and B5 first. My bishop has been chased back to B3. So I guess the question is, does it matter if she hasn't played A6 and B5 yet? Can I somehow make use of that difference? I think this is just bad. So she's going to lose a pawn like in the Marshall, but she's going to get a lot less activity for it than she would have. So I just going to take on d5 and then bishop takes knight and knight takes pawn and I have a pawn for, I have an extra pawn for not a whole lot of compensation. A6 is not a wonderful square for the queen. So you can see she really does not have a whole lot of compensation for the missing pawn. I'm just going to play d4 and prepare to bring out my pieces. Also grabbing some space in the center. So one idea that could cause me some trouble is pawn the c5 trying to rip open the game while my pieces are still undeveloped back here. I'll play bishop e3 to restrain that. And now I just complete our development. I'm recapturing with the pawn to give my d4 pawn some extra reinforcement in case she plays c5 at some point. Instead, she plays f6 to evict my knight from the center. Only one safe square. <laughs> Bishop d6. I could play knight e4, trying to push the bishop back with bishop e7. But then I think she can later on just chase my knight with pawn to f5. Um, I could play pawn to e4, trying to grab some more space in the center, but then she could play bishop f4, and that bishop is going to be hard to evict. So I could also play queen e2. I'm ahead of material, so trades favor me, as we learned in a previous episode. So she'll probably decline the queen trade. Um, I'm guessing she'd play after queen e2 she play queen c6. Queen b6 is not so good because then I have knight c4. So queen e2, queen c6. And now I'm thinking of playing pawn to c4. That threatens d5 and also just grabs more territory. Uh, if queen e2, queen c6, pawn e4, then after, say, um, bishop f7 and rook e8, there could be some pressure on my e4 pawn. 
And also there's still a Bishop F4 idea at some point. So I want to keep the pawn E3 for now and use my C pawn to grab territory instead. Oh, she traded. I just said I thought she was not going to do that because trades favor me since I'm ahead in material. Okay. So she says, my queen was no longer necessary for victory. Given that you're down a pawn for nothing, it's very optimistic for black to be talking about victory at this stage of the game. Pawn to g5. If the queens were still on the board, this move would be pretty risky because it opens up her king, so the pawn can't defend as well when it's far away from the king. But without the queens on the board anymore, it's hard to mount an attack, so she can get away with playing g5. So what she's trying to do is dislodge my knight from f3 by playing g4 next move and try to push my knight to a worse square. So I'm now thinking about playing e4. Before I was concerned about e4 then bishop f4, but now the queens are not on the board, I can just play g3 and not worry about loosening up my king because the main attackers are gone. So let's grab some space. All right, I'll just retreat the knight so I can regroup by playing knight back on d3. Okay, that's a surprise. I thought the point of playing g4 was to deny my knights the f3 square, but now she's letting me go back to f3 at some point. Um, I'm thinking I'll just play h3 That'll deprive her bishop of the g4 square. So now I just continue the regrouping as planned. King g7. I don't understand. On to e5 might look tempting here. The problem though is that bishops like it when the position gets wide open. That's because bishops can zoom all the way across the board, whereas knights have a much more limited range. So unless I see some knockout and I don't, then I don't want to help her open up the position. So e5, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop back, e6. Looks rather impressive at first, but I'm not really sure I'm actually accomplishing anything other than helping her open the position. Rook f1 is more logical. I'm preparing knight f4 to put a, knight, a nicer square. Can she do that? Won't the bishop just get trapped? So pawn b3, pawn a5, Rook a1, pawn to a4, rook takes bishop, game over. All right, Beth, prove me wrong. Okay, now I have a full piece. So I guess she did not like pawn to a4, knight c5, so she's playing b6 in order to stop that. I'm going to play d5, so I can play knight d4, and that knight is just going to be a monster when it gets to e6 or f5. All right, continue with the plan. So we have two tempting options here. Knight e6 check and knight f5 check. I think I like knight e6 check better. That's because the knight on e6 shelters my pawn e4 from the rook. Once my pawn on e4 is safe, my rook on e2 is free to go about doing other stuff. She says, I saw a check coming a mile away. 
Um, okay, good foresight, but you're still busted. Now, the one thing she's got going for her in this position is her pawn on a4. We call it a passed pawn because none of my pawns can stop it. So, first thing I want to do is play c4 to stop her from playing b5. So now she can't support that pawn any further. She still has her bishop and rook supporting it, um, but I can at some point play c5 to stop the bishop from guarding it. And, oh, I guess potential issue here. She could play rook a4 and hunt down my c4 pawn. Okay, I believe I have a rather complicated solution. Um, bear with me here. Rook a2, rook a4, pawn c5, pawn takes c5, and now we're going to play rook takes a3 because the bishop's blocked. Rook takes a3, rook takes a3, pawn to c4, hitting both my knight and the rook. Knight to c5. Now I almost rejected this because of rook takes e6. Pawn takes e6, bishop takes check, and wins the rook. But if the rook takes e6, I have rook a8 check. King moves and then knight takes check, game over. So, well, the other possibility is um, rook a2, rook a4, pawn c5, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, and now pawn c4, knight c5, I guess rook b8 is playable, threatening checkmate, but I just moved my king and life is good. Okay, let's go for it. I don't understand F5. Just seems to... Oh! I almost said just seems to blunder a pawn. But if I play pawn takes f5, she plays bishop takes check, knight takes, rookie one checkmate. So we definitely do not want to do that. Okay, I'm going to go here and force her to clarify what she wants to do with that pawn. Yeah, I saw a check coming. And now I just come here and round up another pawn. Wait. Let me just check something first. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. That's what I was checking. But we're fine. So now I come here, it defends my pawn, also cuts off her king. So her king cannot enter the game. I see something very exciting. Knight e4, and then knight f6, rook g8 mate. So that avoids the knight f6, rook g8, because now if knight f6 you can play king h6, but it does lose a pawn.
Maybe I do have something better, but this looks plenty good enough. And now I don't have to worry about protecting my G2 pawn anymore. So now I want to round up the E3 pawn. So she's stopping me from playing knight d5, but I can still attack it from d1. Not sure what the plan of that move was. She's kind of running out of ideas here. I saw a check coming from a mile away. <laughs> so now I'm hunting down. Hunting down her last pawn. So if she had played instead, she tried pawn to c5, then I guess win the pawn with knight 6 check, and knight takes c5. Here, though, I think I have a trick. Knight takes c6, and then if rook takes, then rook h6 check, followed by zapping the rook. So... This is a nasty move, folks. She does not fall for it, but she's still pretty busted. Uh, let's come over here. So uh, king and knight will escort the pawns. And a knight can block checks. The rook can also block checks from d4. And now he has marched the pawns. Driving her king back. Threatening checkmate. Okay, now for the finishing blow. Knight checks. And pawn checks. And promotes. <laughs> So, another victory. Um, that was definitely not 2,500 strength. I guess there's only one bot left in the series, and that was allegedly 2,700. So, I guess the next episode, we'll find out how I do against that. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you learned something, and hope I inspire you to play better chess.